This one's not dangerous. Only the red ones explode. Video games taught me that. This one explodes. Welcome to the Something or Other Tour. This is the Angels Camp Museum. This is in Angels Camp, California, right in the heart of gold country. This museum is dedicated to all the history in these hills. From the gold rush to Mark Twain to the Chinese laborers, this place covers it all. It houses one of the biggest carriage collections in the world, I believe, or in America, or around here. It's just a huge collection, one of the biggest. It's got really cool artifacts like this. Awesome stuff. I love gold country, I love all this stuff. Let's take a look. Look how big that engine is. It's insane. Oh, Beth. She's a big woman. She's loyal, and strong, fierce. So many knickknacks out here. I love mine carts, little ore cars. I want one. I want a whole like backyard filled with them. This first building has all this cool frontier history and Mark Twain history and opium dens and the opium pipes. the original cabin. We did an episode there. Go watch it. Now underneath here, they have a small place about medicine and the medical community around here and the history of that. So let's take a look. They used this switchboard around here until 1953. Look at these old Coke bottles, old knee-high bottles. So some of the first sodas were actually created by pharmacists and they would sell them in their pharmacies. These old bottles are so cool with the corks in them. Look at these glasses. This is the days of snake oil and snake oil salesmen. People would sell anything as cures to anything. All these different tonics and extracts and compounds, powders. Who knows how many of them actually worked? Probably not many. I wouldn't think, like a licorice powder, what would that, <laughs> what would that cure? Maybe it does cure something, I don't know. Who am I? These old cash registers are like works of art. Amazing stuff. Some people might drive by and think this little building is all this place has to offer, but no, no, no. You come down here, it's three acres of land, two big old buildings and a bunch of other artifacts. This is a monitor. This is what they use to do hydraulic mining. So they would just shoot water out of that thing and just destroy the hill and let all the gold run down. This water wheel has a diameter of 27 feet. And I'm about 6'10", so man, that thing's crazy. Just kidding, I'm not 6'10", it was an old inside joke. Look how far down that goes. And then it goes all the way up there. These power stations are from 1902. I can't even wrap my head around that. I can't even build a Lego set in 2018. Goodness. Look how tall that is. It's crazy. This is a stamp mill from the very end of the 19th century. Basically, all the rocks would go in at the top and it would stamp it and the gold would come out magically somehow. I'm just too dumb to know how. But this is how they separated the gold from the rock and things like that. And the sediment. Imagine those things stamping down on your fingers. I already have a boo-boo too. They do gold panning over here too, which I'm always a fan of. Down here you can do gold panning and then there's this little trail with a bunch of remnants and artifacts. 1914 tractor, 
and a 1905 drill. This is building one of the two main big buildings. So much stuff. Where do I even begin to look? Couldn't tell you. Actually, I do know where to start. I've never actually seen one of these wily coyote things. This whole building's filled with history of the mining around here and the pioneers. These things are so cool. Much like the detonator over there, I usually only see anvils and Looney Tunes. Do I love model trains or what? This model is actually based on a real route near here. That's awesome. And it's got the actual ranches and the mine that was there, the Utica mine, which is right nearby. Look at that old gas pump. A lot of people don't know how important barbed wire actually was. They say that's what tamed the West because people were able to actually make borders. These are models of actual mines, which is really cool. We talking buggies here? Huh? These are all different ways that we try to light the way since it was so dark in the mines. From candles and gas lamps and then finally headlamps and electricity. The guy told me personally that this is a can't miss, so let's see. It's a model of a stamp mill. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. Look how small a person would be. Are we talking making gold here? Honest to goodness, gold? And this is a model of a real stamp mill in Carson Hill, right nearby. One more time. They're just stamping away. Bunch of stamping son of a guns here. Crazy what kind of an operation this must have been. Like, look at those pulleys. Imagine how big they were in real life. That pulley compared to that dude. It's wild to think how hard this life was as a miner. Just hoping you might hit the lotto and strike it rich. And then the miners who were basically working for less than minimum wage in the industrialized mines. And I complain when there's too many people in the drive through line at McDonald's. And these people are over here like Bill Burr said, drilling to the center of the earth, shaking hands with the devil. And I'm upset I can't get my Egg McMuffin fast enough. I think it's funny as humans that we put such value on just minerals and rocks if they're beautiful. <laughs> More boggies. All right, building number one was awesome. Let's see number dos now, the carriage museum. It's so quiet. This is the carriage house. This is impressive. This coach made an 84 mile run across the Sierra Nevadas. From Carson City, Nevada, all the way to Placerville, California. Apparently this thing had 18 coats of paint and they chipped away at the bottom to find what the original color was. They tracked it back and found perfect yellow. And in 1985, they restored it to its original paint job. The stagecoach driver was famous. This thing is so cool. Mr. 
Greeley's wild ride. Horace Greeley, the founder and editor of the New York Tribune, rode the stagecoach across the Sierra Nevadas, driven by our friend Hank Monk over there. Mark Twain famously wrote about that journey in his book, Roughing It. So awesome. Full-blown hearse. There's even a coffin in it. It's like the one outside Haunted Mansion at Disneyland. Do you think they purposely made them creepy? Or are they just creepy because we know them as hearses? This funeral carriage is from 1880. Those plumes up there would signify what type of person was in it, whether they were elderly, a child, or whatever. So like if it was a child, it would be all white plumes. Popcorn wagon. How fun is that? It was the first food truck. Man, this is crazy. I love the old luggage, that's cool. I never think of covered wagons as being that big. That thing is super tall. Gotta get away from this covered wagon before I die of dysentery. These buggies seem way too hoity-toity for me. <laughs> and I like the rough and rugged stuff. Other than this carriage, of course. It's like Disneyland's Main Street fire truck. Who knew there was this many different horseshoes? I surely didn't. Wouldn't I have looked like a fool going into the shop? I need four horseshoes, please. What kind? The ones for horses? All right, kids, that's the Angels Camp Museum. Hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed walking around, seeing the history and the artifacts. Please throw a like or a comment our way, it really helps. Like, subscribe, share, do all the cool things the cool kids do. On this trip, I was kind of hoping it would get cold already and it would be like a cold, gold country up in the mountains thing and it's like 80 something degrees, so cool. Let us know what you liked, what you enjoy, what you want to see more of. There's a critter in here, I hear it scurrying about. If you want to support us past that, check out our Patreon.